it this way to you that it is not COMESA, but it is the tripartite. And the tripartite um, comprising COMESA, the East African Community and SADAC is in itself a partnership and a unique partnership in the sense that we have got three regional organizations that have come together as a result of the decisions by our heads of state and government for the 28 countries to say let us work together and create one FTA. So what we are launching here today in terms of the COMESA, EAC and SADAC uh, partnership with Europe is really uh, that joint you know, effort and partnership. So COMESA at the moment is only chairing the tripartite task force of the three organizations. I just wanted to be clear that uh, it's, a, it's a partnership among the three organizations which is also going to have a, a trilateral by accident partnership with the European Union, with the government of Norway and also with the UK government through the Department of International uh, uh, Development, that's the FID. And this is exactly where you're going to be receiving funding from for this partnership. What does this partnership actually entail? You talk about this tripartite uh, uh, co collaboration essentially. Yeah, what the partnership entails is that uh, it is supporting our own homegrown you know, programs, which is in line with uh, the Paris uh, Declaration of Ownership, of Alignment, of Mutual Accountability. Because it is not something that is designed from outside. And this is why you'll find that here under COP17, what we shall be launching in this partnership is um, you know, a partnership that focuses on agriculture, on uh, smart agriculture, as we call it. Why? For the simple reason that uh, in the challenge that face our countries, the commercial countries in particular, and African countries in general, is the issue of agriculture, because 80% of our people live off the land. And therefore, we need to have adaptation and mitigation when it comes to agriculture. For the very simple reason that uh, it is not our countries that have created this crisis that threatens the very survival of the planet as we have known it, but it is the developed industrialized countries through the pollution, the CO2 emissions that they have caused, which is creating this problem. For, but for us, the partnership is important in that uh, there is that mutual agreement on the, you know, on the on the priorities, and also on the programs that the uh, three partners are supporting. You basically call it the Climate Smart Agriculture um, Initiative, essentially that is going to be occurring. So, give us a, a tangible example with regards to how you are going to change the agricultural landscape within the uh, East African region. What we are going to do here is to say that when you look at agriculture, agriculture is important for the livelihoods of the majority of our people. And when you have got climate change, you have got floods, high temperatures, etc., then you also need to address the issue of how do you adapt, you know, agriculture, you know, for that. But we also have the issues of nutrition security that are embedded in climate change agriculture. But we are talking about climate, uh, well, ag agriculture resilience in terms of uh, its adaptation to the climate change. What is important here is that we already have some lessons to draw from in that under the first funding that we had from the government of Norway, we have had uh, pilot projects in Kenya on smart agriculture. We also have got conservation agriculture, uh, which is being uh, practiced by different countries. What this means is that uh, you can improve your yields through conservation agriculture. Because what happens is that you are able to sow to store the carbon in the soil. And you can also use certain trees to feed the nitrogen uh, in the soil. And this is what we are doing. And we found that, uh, for instance, the yields for those who are practicing conservation agriculture have increased from 1.5 tons to 6 tons. You can imagine if a farmer has got 2 hectares, ends up having 12 tons, 14 tons, it makes a difference because you are not only dealing with the issue of poverty reduction, but you are dealing with the issue of uh, putting money in the pocket. Which is all, exactly, and this is I mean, the whole project is worth around 80 million dollars or so, where you, where you will be receiving funding to that magnitude. Who are you actually targeting? Are you targeting the bigger farmers, or are you looking no, at the small No, not at all. Farmers? Not at all. We are targeting the small, you know, farmers, because the bigger farmers are able to 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 to, to look after themselves, but the small, smaller farmers who are at risk as a result of that. Let me give you an example. 
If you have uh, increasing temperatures, uh, you also need to have seeds, crops that can withstand the high temperatures, which means this is where, you know, uh, science comes in, innovation comes in. But what is also important for us here in terms of this smart partnership is that uh, we must have pilot projects like the ones that we have had, which we can then pilot and if they succeed, what we do is then to upscale them and replicate them in a quite good number of countries. Because the issue with agriculture is this one. You cannot take textbook theory and say it works. What is important is what works in the field. And it is through trial and error. And it's also the farmers who know their own you know, uh, local environment in terms of what works and what does not work. So it's important for us to go through that experimental learning process in order for us to be able to meet the challenges that are caused by uh, climate change, by global warming.